but that was the perception of the customer. And the customer's perception is what really matters, not what, what reality is. So customers are really believing that brick and mortar today is not providing that level of service. And I'll tell you a guy who you really should study. Uh, uh, this guy is amazing. He's the current chairman of the National Retail Federation in the US. He founded his own company about 20 years ago called the Container Store. Uh, how many of you have never been in a container store? Okay, quite a few. There's a couple of them here in Chicago. You got to get into one because you never knew how disorganized you are until you go into a container store. I mean, anybody in the room who's been in a container store knows what I'm talking about. There's stores that, that really organize everything for you. Anyway, Kip Tyndall, the guy who founded the company, started it with a single store 20 some years ago, based out of uh, uh, Texas. Or, I mean, if I will be visiting uh, his head office next week. Absolutely amazing, amazing guy. He asked this question, I'll ask the same question back to you. What is better, three okay employees or one phenomenal employee? What's better? Okay. Question he asked, and I mean, it's not a difficult question. Everybody would answer it. Well, obviously, one phenomenal employee. And he answered the question for himself then, and he said, well, why do we bother with three mediocre ones? Why don't we just take the salary that we paid for three mediocre and give it to one phenomenal employee? Double their salary. And we'll still save money, by the way. So instead of, you know, if I was paying 20000 each, and I take one guy and I pay him forty, I've just saved 20000 in salary. And this is the logic that he has used, used in running his company. And so the container store today, look at the bottom of that slide. The average sales associate in the container store today makes $44,000 a year. It's a retail employee, okay? Not on commission. That's $44,000 average. This is a company that gives in the first year of employment 187 clock hours of training. They're obsessive about teaching their employees how to sell and how to interact with customers, how to amaze customers. As a matter of fact, when you go to their website, they will tell you the customer in our store is not first. The customer in our company is not number one. Employee is number one. Because we know if we absolutely amaze our own employees, what do you think they're going to do to our customers? He found what I really believe is the secret to great retail. And that is that ability to motivate their staff. Try to steal somebody from this company. Try to recruit a well-trained uh, 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 person from this company, the container store. You can't. They will not leave. They won't leave because they really love what they do. And you can tell it every time you go into their stores. And their stores never have big sales. They never have big discounts going on. They're always selling pretty much at regular price day in and day out and making an exceedingly good margin at doing so. You see, what's happening is there are so many companies that are raising the bar. They're setting customers' expectations. Ritz Carlton, uh, one of our clients, I mean, all you have to do is stay at a Ritz once, and you really understand what great, great service is all about. The motto of Ritz, ladies and gentlemen, serving ladies and gentlemen. It's been their motto since day one. And the Ritz has the service promise. Every employee at Ritz, every employee from the maid all the way up through the organization is empowered to spend up to $5,000 on a guest. So anytime I, as a maid, hear that you're not happy with your room, I have the ability to comp that room. If I'm a waiter in one of our restaurants and I hear you didn't like your dinner, I can comp the dinner for you. Matter of fact, I can comp your entire stay up to $5,000 with no questions asked. Or the only question that will be asked is how do we make sure it doesn't happen again? Now, clearly, if you're going to have that kind of service level, you really got to trust your people to be able to deliver that level of service. Even Starbucks, absolutely amazing. Uh, have you ever been served by a black apron at Starbucks? Starbucks is one of those companies that really have found, again, a really interesting secret to keeping their people very, very motivated. Uh, most of the time, you see green aprons at Starbucks. 
Next time when you go into Starbucks, have a look. There may, may be a black apron in that store. And have a look at the black apron because it'll have an embroidery right on the front of it. And that embroidery says Coffee Master. And that black apron, you have to earn. That black apron is more difficult to earn than a sommelier degree in wine. And it is the equivalent of a sommelier degree in coffee. You have to go to school and take tests to earn your black apron. There are only about, I believe, I think two or 3,000 black aprons in all of Starbucks around the world today. It's a very coveted position. But what they do is they honor the expertise of certain of their employees. They really make it a, a, a badge of honor to earn that black apron. And that's the person, by the way, you want making your coffee. And Apple, we all know how legendary their service is in their stores. Absolutely amazing. Singapore Airlines, bottom left-hand side, just a heads up for you, don't ever fly first class in Singapore Airlines, okay? Just don't ever do it, because your life will never be the same. They, they will have to pry your hands off of the seat to get you off the plane. They will have to threaten police. Uh, okay, maybe not the police, they didn't threaten me with that. But anyway, uh, it's an unbelievable experience, unbelievable. So our customers are going through these experiences every day, every week. They are seeing all of these other service providers. And there are other retailers, and there are other just simply service providers. And they're getting all of this treatment. We have to live, we have to compete in that same environment. Because customers shop what I call horizontally. They don't compare you to another floor shop. They compare you to Nordstrom's. They compare you to Saks Fifth Avenue. They compare you to Walmart. They compare you to Target. They compare you to any shopping retail experience that they have had. And again, who's setting these expectations today? Well, principally and primarily, web and mobile. This has really been what has been putting the consumer in the driver's seat. Web and mobile have been driving tremendous amounts of product knowledge for the customer and tremendous abilities, clearly, to competitive shop. And so this is really putting the customer in the driver's seat. They're in charge today like never before. Retailers used to be in charge, but I'll tell you today, not the case at all. The customer has got complete and total control over their lives. Low price walks, works for Walmart because Walmart has got 40% of their inventory that's consumable. You got to be in a Walmart every day. They're selling toilet paper, diapers, all the stuff you need to buy. What consumable product did Sears have? None. Unless your washing machine broke, you had no reason to go in there. JC Penney's learning that same lesson the hard time, the hard way. That they have got product that the customer's sitting on their couch and they just didn't jump up and say, oh, I need a new t-shirt. Same thing in many cases with flowers. We do need to promote. We do need to get the customer to come in. We can't just simply put out a regular price or whatever and expect that that's, not gonna excite, that that's gonna excite the customer. Reality is today that the customer wants to be lied to. They want to be excited. You know, it's not a really good idea to have a markdown every day, but most stores now are really having a tough time getting out from underneath it. There is no way, once again, to avoid the promoting. We've got to do it. The problem with doing promotions in Groupon and Living Social and a lot, all those other daily deal sites, the problem is it takes the R, the relationship, out of the deal. I think that a lot of you can start doing deals, but doing them yourself with the customer. I think that a lot of us can begin to use Pinterest and, and a lot of other social networking to give the same kind of that feeling to a customer that they're getting a good deal. Remember, none of them want to feel like they've overpaid. They want to feel like they are getting the absolute best. And that's why, the, by the way, you know, words mean things. Uh, when I'm going to have to substitute a flower on, a, on an order that came in or whatever, I'm not going to say to the customer, I substituted. I'm going to say to them, I'm going to use that beautiful word that we invented in the computer industry and the hotel industry, I've upgraded you. I've upgraded you. And now the upgrade may be the same price flower <laughs> or even one a little bit you know, less for all practical purposes, but I upgraded the bouquet. And when the customer hears, oh, it's not a substitution, it's an upgrade. They absolutely love this. 
gift with purchase, another thing that the cosmetics companies taught us years and years ago. There isn't a woman in this room who buys her Clinique or uh, Chanel or any cosmetics at, at, at a discount. Come on, you can't. They never discount it. What do they do? They give a gift with purchase. That's another great way of promoting. So get this uh, a dozen roses and get the vase for free. Gift with purchase. A lot of you are already doing it. Or if you're going to have sales, do limited time sales. This is good for three days, four days on a category. And even I hate category promotions. Don't promote all roses, all stems, whatever. Promote single individual items or products. Products that maybe you got too much of. That's a good thing to promote. Uh, products that you can make a little bit more money on. That's a good thing to promote. Do not promote across all categories because the customer will come and, and just cherry pick you. Never ever use percentages. Don't ever use 20% off, 30% off. Take a rule from our cousins in consumer packaged goods. When was the last time you saw 20% off Tide? 30% off Colgate. It doesn't happen. They always give dollars off because dollars are not something that, can people, that people can build up a tolerance to. I don't know about you, 10% doesn't do anything for me anymore. I mean, I need to have 40, 50% before I even stop and look, 70% before I'll buy. That's where we've come to with percentages. So get off of the percentages. Think long term. The promotions that you run should be building and reinforcing a relationship with that customer. You should never give a, a deal without knowing their email address or their text address, without really being able to recontact that customer. Because I say any idiot can give away a product that takes a merchant to sell it. Any idiot can give away flowers. It takes a real florist to be able to sell those flowers and make a profit out of it. You see, because what, what's happening today, this is a quick little story from a guy named Sir Thomas Gresham. He lived back in the 1500s in London. And, and Sir Thomas at the time noticed that, that, that merchants were coming into downtown London and they were selling watered down milk. And this watered down milk was sold at a 20% discount over the regular milk, except they didn't say that it was watered down. So in essence, what happened within two or three months time, all the regular price, the full quality milk uh, vendors went out of business. That's what we're facing today. There's so many cheap product out there that is driving the customer's perception, and we are on a race to the bottom with product. And we've got to stop that race. The only way we stop it is through education.